Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Austin with Cougar Chem Tutoring and I'll be running through problem set one intro to chemistry here with you. What is chemistry? Chemistry is matter or the study of matter. Okay, that's particularly what we're going to be looking at um, in Chem 105 and in any chemistry course that you end up doing. Okay, in particular four components. Composition. Um, what is it composed of? What is its identity? Structure. Okay, how is it structurally set up? What does it look like in three-dimensional space, particularly on the molecular level? Properties, uh, physical or chemical. How does it react with certain things? What kind of things can it do based off of certain inherent properties that it has? Lastly, changes. Okay, the changes it undergo that matter undergoes, uh, be it physical or chemical, and also the energy involved with those. Okay, uh, energy involved. Okay, chemical classifications. Classes of matter. Okay, so we got pure elements, compounds, and mixtures. Those are the only classes of matter that you'll have to be familiar with. There are technically two subcategories for mixtures, which we'll get in, into here in a little bit. Uh, pure element. Um, that means a comp or that uh, substance is only made up of one element, and that element you'll always find on the periodic table. So I'll just put periodic table here. A compound is a substance made up of more than one element. Okay. Um, just means that the the particular. If I took one molecule of that part of that substance. Um, that it would be made up of more than one different element. Okay. Lastly, mixtures are anything that could be um, a mixture of really a pure element with another pure element, or a pure element with a compound, or a compound with various compounds. It can, it's, it's, can be pretty broad as long as it's not just made up of one specific thing, right? Okay. So those are those are the main differences uh, between the classes of matter. So if we look at this first diagram here, we notice that there's two red molecules or two red atoms bound together. But, but anytime you see the same color and same size, it's always going to indicate the same element. So this is just a pure element because that's all I see in this diagram is just the same element. Okay, so that's going to be a pure element. Here in the second box, I've got a, one pure element with another pure element. Okay, so that's a totally different uh, element. And so this is going to be a mixture. Okay, a mixture of pure elements. It just happens to be here. Lastly, in this third box, we've got a substance that is made up of, uh, well, we've got a, a molecule that has one, one element and another element or two other elements that are, you know, come from the same element. Um, so this is actually a compound, um, a compound. Okay, because this molecule is made up of more than one element. All right, physical states, solid liquids and gases. You probably already covered this in some sort of previous high school chemistry course or physics or whatever it may be. So this is probably pretty intuitive for you, but hopefully um, it'll make sense as far as how we look at it in the diagram. Um, solid. This first one is a solid, and you'll you'll tell because it's not conforming to the sides of its container. It's in a, st a strict, rigid 3D structure here, and that's going to character uh, char uh, be characteristic of a solid. Here on the second diagram, we have a gas, and the reason is is because the molecules are relatively spaced apart, right? They're not pretty close to each other, and they're free to roam around. They move pretty independently of one another. So that's pr that those those are characteristics of a gas. Lastly, here we have a liquid. Um, which does conform to the sides of its container, um, but the molecules are still free to roam around a little bit. They, they, they still have room to tumble over each other and rotate. So that's all, that, that'll be characteristic of um, a liquid when, on a diagram when you look at these. Okay. Number three, for each of the following, state the class of matter. If it is a mixture, state which are homogeneous mixtures and which are heterogeneous. And we'll get into those differences here as we uh, look at these examples. So sugar water, sugar water. Okay, sugar is a compound. Okay. And water is a compound. We usually just dissolve sugar in water, right? So um, here, let's say I have a glass of water. The key between de determining the differences between uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous are if you can take one section of it, let's say I take this section here, and I compare it to this section here of this glass of water, sugar water, does it look exactly the same? Okay, are, are there... Are, is, does the mixture have a uniform amount of everything in every, in every, like same concentration, for example, in every part of it, and same different types of substances? And if the answer is yes, then it is a homogeneous mixture. Okay, that means it's uniformly the same throughout the whole mixture. Right? Think of things like um, salt water or milk or things like that. Okay, one an, an example that would be a heterogeneous mixture might be a orange juice with a lot of pulp. Right. Um, usually the pulp will kind of settle down, right? And you got to kind of shake it up. Let's say you ha let it settle for a little bit. The pulp will just settle down to the bottom. So th one section of the orange juice won't exactly always look like another section of the orange juice, right? So that's an example of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Purified salt. Um, a salt is really just a cation 
Cation is a positively charged substance, which is usually a metal, um, and it's ionically bound to a nonmetal, which is usually anionic. Um, and and uh, and that's that's kind of how you'll see it. A table salt, for example, is sodium chloride or sodium iodide, um, and these salts are made up of at least more than one element. So these are compounds. And I'll go ahead and box the answers here so that they're a little more obvious to you. Okay, that's a compound. Okay, nitrogen. Nitrogen is just nitrogen. We don't even need to worry about the phase. It's not going to affect the class of matter. So this is a pure element. Nitrogen is one of the elements on the periodic table. Uh, Italian dressing, if you're not familiar with Italian dressing, um, you have to shake it up, right? Almost every time you have to use it because it's a heterogeneous mixture that we try to shake up so we can get a generally homogeneous mixture and pour it on our salad, okay? Liquid butter. Um, liquid butter uh, is is different and will look different than solid butter. And I'll, I'll try to illustrate this here for you here. Say I have, um, that's kind of a bad drawing here. Um, let's say I have some butter here, okay? Um, let's draw this thing yellow here. Got some butter. Okay, solid butter, right? This, this is kind of what it looks like when you put it on your plate or whatever. If I were to take a slice of this guy and right here, would it look identical to this other part if I sliced over here? On solid butter, yes, right? Anytime you were to, you, you slice through one part of it, it's likely going to look like any other part of the solid butter, okay? Um, but this is asking about liquid butter. So let's say I have a plate of liquid butter. When you melt lick, when you melt butter, you get uh, uh, various oils and substances that don't mix very well, okay? Um, if you haven't done this, try it at home, and you, you'll see what I mean, okay? And this becomes a heterogeneous mixture. Once it solidifies, it becomes, you know, a homogeneous mixture, but liquid butter in and of itself is actually a uh, heterogeneous mixture because of that property, okay? Milk, we actually talked about earlier, it's actually a homogeneous mixture, right? It looks pretty uniform through the whole thing. Lastly, we've got carbon dioxide. These are two elements com uh, combined together. That becomes a compound, okay, compound. All right. We kind of talked about this in uh, number two, um, but we'll kind of just uh, review this for a little bit. For each picture, describe the state of matter and state your reasoning, okay? Solids, this is the key stuff here, held in a three rigid 3D structure, and it does not conform to the size of its container, okay? Um, close together, but are free to rotate, okay? Um, that's characteristic of a liquid, okay? Notice that they're close together. They're not free roaming, they're not flying out, but they are they are close together, okay? So um, we'll, we'll call that a liquid. And then lastly here, we're, we're gonna classify this as gas because they're far apart. They move pretty freely independent of one of another. Number five, describe the following changes, whether they're chemical process, chemical reactions or physical processes, and describe the physical state of each substance, okay? So it looks like, let's start with the physical state on each one here. We've got two gases uh, and another, and it becomes a gas. All right, two gases again becomes a gas and a solid. Okay, so those are the physical states. Now let's look at chemical reactions. Okay, the key here between determining whether it's a physical or a chemical process is does the identity change? Identity. That's the key word here. Okay, identity. So I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. Here we've got one element and another element, and they become a whole new thing, right? This is this is a compound. Uh, let's call this actually O2 here and uh, H2, and they become H2O, right? It's H2O is no longer just oxygen or just hydrogen, right? It's now its own thing. It's water, right? And so this is a chemical change. Whoops, it looks like a G here, but a chemical change, okay? Because the substances have changed their identity. They're no longer just oxygen or just hydrogen, okay? In contrast to the second one here, so we've still got the oxygen and hydrogen here, but there's still hydrogen and oxygen on the bottom here. The only difference is, is the oxygen here has turned into a solid, which is a physical process, right? It doesn't, it ha we haven't changed the substance. In fact, we can rechange it. We can put a little heat back in and turn it back into a gas. Um, and so that becomes a physical change. So those are the key differences that you want to look at here. On number six, it's asking the same kind of question, but without giving you, you know, um, I did the identities of uh, molecules or elements involved, okay? So it, you'll have to kind of use a different form of thinking. So here we've got milk that has become more solid. Here, um, what I meant when I was writing this was it becomes more chunky. And when we think of it becoming chunky, it's becoming sour, right? It's becoming rotten. The question when you're looking at these changes here, if it's physical or chemical, is can you go backwards? 
if you can't go backwards, then it's a physical change. If you can go backwards, then it's a physical change. Okay. So can you? So for example, on A here, can you unrot the milk? You can't unrot the milk. Okay. So that's a chemical change. Can you unfry chicken? No. You cannot unfry chicken. Can you recarbonate or decarbonate root beer? Yes, you can. Right. You just throw dry ice into some root beer or whatever, or if you, you, you let your root beer sit too, out too long and it loses some of the carbonation, you can just recarbonate it, right? That's a physical change. Baking a cake. Can you unbake the cake? And the answer is no, obviously, right? So that's a chemical change. It's totally changed at that point. Plating a spoon with silver. Um, if you don't know, uh, this is an electrochemical reaction that we use. It can be undone, so this is a physical change, okay? You can unplate a spoon of silver. Lastly, water droplets forming on a can, right? You, we've all had like a cold soda can out on a hot day, and it condense. We, we see water molecules condensing onto the soda can. Um, now, notice I said condensed. That means water molecules were previously in the gas phase, and now we've become a liquid. And so that's simply a physical change, right? We can re, we can turn it back into gaseous water. It's just a physical change. Okay. Seven. Indicate which of the following are physical or chemical properties of tungsten. Now, we're looking, when we're looking at physical chemical properties, the difference here that you want to look for is physical. It's, it's, you're never going to see it, you know, um, reacting with something else. Chemical processes are, are chemical properties are how does it interact with something else, okay? It's going to, there's something else going to be involved in the chemical property. A physical is how, is unique to that substance, but does not involve any, any, anything else. Um, so, for example, here on part A, pure tungsten is relatively malleable. just means I can be beat it up and change its shape, right? I'm not interacting with it with anything else. The identity has not changed, right? So that falls under physical, okay? It is often used as a metal filament in a light bulb. Now, that it, it's not changing its identity. It's not reacting with anything in the light bulb. It's just passing electricity through it, right, which is what gives us the light in a light bulb. That's actually all tungsten, if you didn't know. Um, and so that's a physical property, right? It's still, it's still just tungsten, okay? At high temperatures, it reacts with oxygen to produce um, tungsten trioxide, okay? So now that is a chemical property, right? That's a, spe that's a specific chemical property with how it reacts with something else, right? It's reacting with oxygen in this case to change its identity, right? We, we always know that the identity is, if, if the identity is changed, that's somehow chemically um, uh, involved, right? That's going to be a chemical process or chemical property or whatever it may be, okay? So that's chemical. Its density is identical, identical to that of gold. Uh, now, careful, we're not actually reacting with gold. We're just saying we're comparing two different values to it. Density is a physical property, right? That's specific to tungsten, okay? Lastly, tungsten is considered relatively unreactive. Unreactive, okay? Remember, reactivity reactivity is specific, uh, uh, specific to chemical properties, okay? Chemical, right? How does it react with something else? So that's chemical. All right, so that'll do it for problem set one, intro to chemistry. I hope that made sense. Um, if you have more questions or would like additional help, um, I, I uh, do tutoring services, which I have included um, in the description section here. Um, you can bring up up to four people to one session for the same price. Okay, so if you you have you have three other three three buddies of yours that you'd like to take to a, you know a tutoring session, it'll be the same price um, for however many people you bring. Um, so, uh, uh, and you can do it either via Zoom or through or, or in person, um, and I can meet on campus or whatever you'd like. Um, it, you'll just have like a little form that you'll fill out for that.